Today, the message is entitled, Abundance in These Hard Times. For families with young children, there is a PDF file to help them with the message. We thank Illustrated Ministry in making the PDF file freely available during this time of pandemic. I encourage parents and children to think about the following question during the message. Jesus says he is the gate. What does Jesus open to us when we go through the gate? Let us pray. O oh, living God, open our hearts and minds to recognize the abundance that you shower upon us. In the name of the risen Lord, we pray. Amen. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. So movies, they can be a wonderful form of escape, especially during times of stress and anxiety. From the life of Pi to Gladiator, from Field of Dreams to Amadeus, from Gone with the Wind to the Avengers, where would you like to go? And for a little while, we can cry, laugh, and rage with the characters until the real world reels us back in. Part of the fun. But I have to confess, there is one genre of film that my husband enjoys far more than I do. In fact, when he chooses a film from this particular genre, I outwardly groan and inwardly cringe, often because of the cheesy dialogue. It may surprise you that the genre I often do not enjoy is from the Christian faith. I have often found the dialogue in these films to be too simplistic, formulaic, and at times even dogmatic. Not having been blessed with the gift of faith, pat answers and statements like just believe don't cut it for me. Instead, I am drawn to people who have struggled in this world and yet still believe. I'm drawn to stories of faith that are honest about pain and disappointment. So when Christian singer Jeremy Kemp's wife wakes up from her hospital bed in the film entitled, I Still Believe, and suddenly says to her husband, it's gone, it's gone, I'm healed, it doesn't hurt anymore, I just rolled my eyes. But mere seconds later, I heard the sound of a heart monitor flatline. And then I raced to the TV screen to see what would happen next. To my surprise, Jeremy Camp's wife died. Now I was hooked. How will Jeremy respond? How will the movie end? What does this film have to do with a verse I've wrestled with this week? I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Born in the late 70s, Jeremy Camp was born in Lafayette, Louisiana. His father was a pastor who taught him how to play the guitar. And while at Bible college, Jeremy was encouraged to join a music ministry program. All over California, he performed at Christian music events. And at one of them, he met a girl. Her name was Melissa. Although their romance had a rocky start and Melissa discovered she had ovarian cancer, Jeremy and Melissa got married after she went into remission. Sadly, after their honeymoon, they discovered that Melissa's cancer had returned and early in 2001, she died. She was only 21 years old. After Melissa dies in the movie, Jeremy goes back to live with his parents. As he unloads his bags into his old room, he calls out to his dad as his dad is about to give him some privacy. Here is a little bit of that dialogue. Can I ask you a question? Anything? I remember I prayed and prayed in this room for Josh to be born healthy. It didn't happen. And you prayed for so long for your ministry. Still nothing. Dad, I begged God to heal Melissa. Who 
What am I, sp what am I supposed to do with that? Are you asking if Josh's disabilities were disappointing? Yes, they are. Did I have big dreams that didn't come true? Sure. Do I understand why Melissa isn't here anymore? No, son, I don't. I'm sorry. But I know my life is full. I feel rich and I'm proud of this family. Honestly, at the time, I didn't agree with what you did. I didn't understand it. You chose willingly to walk into the fire with her, right beside her, all the way to the end. But then, that's exactly what I would do for your mom and you boys. That's what love is. And I got to watch my son do that for his wife. That was a privilege. I don't know the answers to your questions. But I do know this. And my life is not full in spite of the disappointments. It's full because of them. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Today's gospel lesson comes after Jesus heals a blind man. Unfortunately, the demarcation of chapters sometimes gives us modern readers a false sense of separation between the chapters. But it is important to understand what Jesus means by life in all its fullness through the blind man's healing and the dialogue that follows. The blind man rejected because of it, sorry, the blind man was rejected because of his blindness, was also rejected in spite of his wholeness. The Pharisees, you see, don't like the fact that the blind man was healed by Jesus, or that the now formerly blind man has the audacity to question them, the religious leaders. So they drive the formerly blind man out. When Jesus hears about this, he goes out to find that man he has healed. And it is in this conversation, when Jesus asks about belief in the Son of Man, another title for Jesus, that the man says that he believes and then worships Jesus. Here is now the one who recognizes Jesus' voice and has entered the pasture. Although the formerly blind man is still rejected by the world and those spiritually blinded by their sin, this man who has been healed knows Jesus' voice and now follows him. As Jesus says in verse 9, I am the gate. Those who come in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Unlike the Pharisees who are blinded by their close-mindedness, the man healed by Jesus finds salvation by entering the gate that is Jesus. And what does this salvation look like? It is one of belonging, for Jesus claims him as one of God's very own children. But salvation, entering the gate, is also about healing. A healing that restores the man's dignity because he no longer has to sit on the dusty road in order to beg for food. Healing. It is also a healing that removes the stain of blame and shame on the one who is suffering. Healing. It is also a healing for the one who has suffered greatly. A healing in the truth that no matter how much the world may reject us, no matter how unfair the pain and burden, Jesus has come to call us by name and into the pasture of salvation. 
All week, I've pondered the words that Tom Camp said to his son Jeremy in the film, I Still Believe. I don't know the answers to your questions, but I do know this. My life is not full in spite of the disappointments. It's full because of them. Although Jeremy's tragic loss was more than a disappointment, I know what Tom Camp means. Tom Camp is talking about what Jesus says in verse 10. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. As we endure this pandemic, anxiety will try to steal our peace. Loss will try to kill our faith and fear will try to destroy our well-being. Yet this need not be our reality because Jesus has said, Jesus has promised, I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Restore each other's dignity. Let go of blame and shame. Remember that I call you by name. Jesus is the one who heals. Amen. <laughs>